We are on verse 13 of chapter 17. Okay. The liberated one neither abuses nor praises. He neither rejoices nor is he angry. He neither gives nor receives. He is free from enjoyment in all objects. So we can look at this from two different viewpoints. Again, the way I like to frame it, what's the difference between the Mahatma and the ax murderer? Both are Brahman. There is nothing but Brahman. Yet, how they behave in this Maya of this world is very different. What is different is the mind of the Mahatma as compared to the mind of the axe murderer. From that, their behavior, the way they are in the world is different. So for the Jivan Mukta, the liberated soul who has penetrated into these three questions, Koham, who am I? What is this world and how has it come about? Who am I? Aham Brahmasmi, I am that heartless Brahman. What is this phenomenal world? The scriptures give us two apparently contradictory phrases. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. Brahman alone is real. The phenomenal world is an illusion. And then Chandogya Thunder Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. All this is barely Brahma. You will make up your mind. Is it an illusion or is it God? Yes the substance, the material cause, what's actually there is Brahman. The names and forms are adhyasa. They are a superimposition caused by maya. And from that, the illusory mind takes the lead. So for the Jivan Mukta, who sees this whole phenomenal world, nothing but God. All these reactivities to the world don't exist in the same way they do for the person in ignorance. Now, wait a minute. I remember seeing Swamiji. I would see, read scripture passages like this, and I would see Swamiji getting annoyed at such and such. And then I'd see it was very clear that he liked spicy food, and that he would uh, be angry at this. And then he would love to drive in fast cars. That seems to contradict the scripture. The mark of the Jivan Mukta is they are identified as the self. The self has no desire, the self has no aversion, the self has no attachment, the self has no abandonment, the self has no ignorance, the self has no realization. Can say the self is already and always realized. It is not the karta and the mukta, the actor. 
So the Jivan Mukta simply observes the play of the epiphany. To the ordinary person, they may seem to behave like you and me. But for those of us who have the capacity to tune to the mind of the Jivan Mukta, Oh, what's there is just emptiness, emptiness, emptiness. There's no there there. But for you and me, we practice it. Practice letting go. Swamiji always used to say the way to heal the mind is to get out of the mind. Don't believe your mind. Any thoughts on this? All right, next one. Aditi, can you get closer to your microphone? Sure. Is that better? Hope so. Sanuragam triam drishtva mrityuva samupasthitam avehvalamana sastho mukta eva mahashayaha. The noble minded one is not perturbed and remains self poised at the sight of a woman full of passion as well as of approaching death. He is indeed liberated. So beautiful poetry. Again, um, our poet here strikes at the root of what tends to drive most of us, which is sex. So again, for, for uh, cis men, which is whom this is aimed at, side of a beautiful woman. And for ladies too, the side of a good looking dude. And all the parameters in between. For the Jivan Mukta, as movement. I like to um, call it, it's like going to a museum. We can go to a museum and we can see a beautiful painting and appreciate its beauty. But we don't want to take it off the wall and drag it home. We can let it be where it is without the desire or no need to possess it. So for attraction and aversion, they no longer touch the Jeevan Mukta in the way that it may for you and me. Now, the mind will always have its preferences. It's not that the, the Jivan Mukta is a zombie, you know, no feeling of any kind. But you can discern the difference in your own heart between a preference and an insistence. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Sukhe dukhe nare naryam sam patsucha vipas Pipatsucha Vishesho Nevadhi Rasya Sarvatra Samadarshinaha.
The wise one who sees the same everywhere sees no difference between happiness and misery, man and woman, fortune and misfortune. Yes. So I love the way Nisargadatta Maharaj frames this. He says, happiness and suffering, happiness and sorrow are the same thing. They are like the heads and tails of a coin. By happiness, I mean when the mind seeks the world, people, places, things, and situations in order to be happy. If we attach, we will suffer. We may also get some joy, but it will always be followed by sorrow. It's like saying, oh, I want coins, but I only want coins that have heads on them, no tails. No. Coins have a head side and a tail side. Things of this world start off with happiness, sukham, and then because of the nature of the world and because of the nature of the mind, it's always followed by loss. Either the object changes or my mind changes. I don't want it anymore. And if our life is invested in trying to wring happiness out of the world. And you get your little droplet of joy. The yoga says, let go. Let the mind stay home. Understand that real joy is yourself. Any thoughts on this? Next one. Nahin sa neva karunyam, no tetyam na chadinata, na shayam neva cha kshopa, kshina sansarana. In the man whose worldly life is exhausted, there is neither compassion nor violence, neither humility nor pride, neither wonder nor agitation. So it's a beautiful image. How do we come to this place of mature vairagya? The man whose extroversions into the world are exhausted. Shankara uses a similar image when he talks about the qualifications of a fit teacher. Who's, he says, who is as calm as a fire that has burnt up its fuel. Or one of my favorite sayings of St. Augustine. Every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. So what do we need to do? We come into this world with a heart full of vasana. I want, I want, I want, more better, different. More better, different, more better, different, more better, different. We have to exhaust that. Two ways. Very strong ones we have to live through. 
the less demanding ones, we can let go of them through insight. Let's see if I can give you a worldly example of it. In the text Alcoholics Anonymous, first 164 pages sets out the program. Whole rest of the book are stories. And in the text, the stories are divided into various sections. The first is the old timers, a selection of those first 100 alcoholics who got sober in the 30s. The second section is called They Stopped in Time. And they're stories about those who were barely potential alcoholics. But having understood the syndrome of alcoholism, they were able to stop before they had ruined their health, before they had lost everything and were on the streets, before they had totally ruined every relationship in their life, like the low bottom drugs. They stopped in time. So also, once we clearly understand that it's the extroversion of the mind, it's the shape of Shakti, it's Spriha, it's longing, it's Vancha, it's wanting, it's Sangraha, it's grabbing, it's attachment causes my suffering. I develop the desire to be free from the tyranny of desire. I don't have to live through all that heartache. I can let it go out of inside. Now, what is sukham? What is dhukam? Sukham, happiness, dhukam, suffering. When the environment is conducive, the mind is happy. When the environment is non conducive, the mind is unhappy. That's it. That's this world. <laughs> Those are the three states of the mind. Hasn't changed since you were two weeks old. So the yogi gets out of the syndrome. And is no longer tyrannized by. Any thoughts on this? Then we find that state that the Master Jesus called, uh, My kingdom is not of this world. I bring you a peace that passes all understanding. I give you real food to eat. Something real, something permanent that won't perish. Any questions, any thoughts? Next one. Namukto Vishay Vishta Nava Vishaya Lop Lubaha A Sun Sakta Mana Nityam Prabta Prabta Mupa Shrinati Shrinate 
The liberated one has neither aversion nor craving for the objects of the senses. Ever with detached mind, he experiences both what is attained and what is not attained. He experiences both what? Both what is attained and what is not attained. Okay. So asansakaha is the word that he's using here. Uh, the idea is I am uh, not attached, not touched by it all. He watches the movie go by, sees the conducive, the non-conducive environments, not concerned by them. The Jivan Mukta is not afraid of the world. afraid of the world because she sees it's not real it's not substantial I was talking with my stepsister uh yesterday uh they were supposed to come up and visit over the weekend we had to cancel the trip and uh she's keen on egyptian stuff which i like too and i was on facebook and there's an uh immersive exhibit of King Tut coming to San Francisco. And I said, hey, you wanna come when that's in town? And she says, well, if it's just an immersive exhibit, I don't wanna come because you know I wanna see the real things. You know, so I think the immersive exhibit is just all gonna be projections on the wall. So that's this world. It's just projections on the wall. Projections on the screen of consciousness. And there's the fabulous tune of all the objects. Seeing but not real. It's just a, a wall inside the exhibit. They turn the, the projector off and it's just white walls. Stop the mind and the world disappears. But for the Jivan Mukta, the appearance of the world is not problematic. Sarvam kalvidam brahma, all this is verily brahma. Brahma satyam jagan mitya, brahman alone is real. The jagat, the names and form, are mitya. Pretty. Any thoughts? Next one. Samadhana, Samadhana. Hita hita vikalpana shunya chitto na janati kaivalya miva sanstitaha. Oh, this is beautiful. The wise man of empty mind does not know the mental alternatives of contemplation and non contemplation, of good and evil. He abides, as it were, in the state of aloneness. Kevala or Kaivalya aloneness. Read the Sanskrit again for me one more time. Samadhi, Samadha, Asamadha, is that right? Samadhan, Asamadhan. Going on? Hita, Ahita, Vikalpanaha. 
Shunya chitto na jana. That's what it was. Shunya chitta. The person of empty or void mind. That is not some state of insentience. That means inside. There's no person there. What is the mind? The mind that is here described that's problematic is three ideas. One, Jiva Bhavana, I think I'm a person. Two, there's a goal of some sort. That goal only takes two forms. I either need to fix or change the world, or I need to fix or change me. And the third element is Gartavya, the compulsion to act. I'll be happy when, it'll be better if, what I call the struggler. This is what's gone. This is Shunya Chitta, an empty mind. This is the deeper meaning of Nirvana which literally means blown out. There's nobody jonesing in there anymore. It's gone. Now here, it's translated as contemplation or not contemplation. It's actually samadhi or not in samadhi. Samadhi is a mind state, is the mind state of the mind not thoughting. We have prakasha, pure light of awareness. Then we have vimarsha, the deliberation of the mind. When we remove all the thoughting, this is the state of sin. The samadhi of value. Yes. What is its value? For most of us, we cannot seem to let go of the personal sense of self until we have the direct experience of its disappearance in samadhi. Enlightens will debate, is samadhi necessary, is samadhi not necessary? I won't go into that. I'll just say, for most of us, it can be useful. It's also blissful. In Tripura Rahasya, in the earlier story of Hema Leka and Hema Chuda in the beginning, Hemachuda goes into Samadhi and he's like a drunkard. And Hemalaika, his wife, comes and says, My Lord, my Lord. And he comes out and he says, Oh, how is it that you know of this state and you're not immersed in it always? Leave me alone, leave me alone. Leave me alone. And she says, My Lord, how can it be perfection? when it's gain or loss achieved by the opening or the closing of the eyes, the length of eight grains of barley. The Sargadatta Maharaj is asked by one of his disciples, are you in Samadhi all the time? And he says, of course not. So there's a state beyond Nirvikalpa Samadhi, which is the knowledge 
Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahma. And this world is like images in a mirror, Kati Vinta. So, what I say to students, here we call the samadhi can be a value. Let it sneak up on you from behind. Don't make near become for your goal. In the beginning, is it of value to, through effort, through will, to quieten the mind? Yes, of course. It's a value to investigate into yourself. The mind will slip into samadhi when all your basam has been roasted, for example, frankly. Seek to know who you are. Seek to stay identified as Brahma. Be very careful to not make near the culpa samadhi some other spiritual goal. As it were, a means to an end. For some of us, near the culpa is a huge earth shaking kind of event. Everything changes after that. It may be hours long. For others of us, this whole process, and you wait until the siren goes by. The shift is just this click. Oh. There's nobody there. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Nirmamo nir ahankaro na kinchiditi nishchitaha antar antar galita sarva sarvarshaha kurvanapi karotina. Devoid of the feelings of Inus and minus, knowing for certain that nothing is. And with all his inner desires melted away, the wise man does not act, though he may appear to be acting. So, all this I-ness and minus has melted away. She sees the unreality of any personal sense of self. Always aware that I am unattached anywhere. And here the poet is riffing on that whole idea we get in Gita, what is action in the midst of actionlessness, and what is actionlessness in the midst of action. It is the equipment, body, mind, intellect, that is always doing the acting, it is moving. The self never acts. So from the standpoint of the equipment, even though you're sitting still in meditation, perhaps for hours, that's an action.
And from the standpoint of the cell, you're busy at work, you're running around shopping, you're cleaning the house. I do nothing. I go home. Any thoughts on this? But if, if, if I succumb to the idea, I am the actor, then all of a sudden the sorrows of the mind start up. Because what I do becomes consequential. I can make a mistake or I can be successful. I am not getting what I want. I am getting what I want. I have to take out the flowers to make sure other people behave nicely. So I will be happy. And then if they don't, I throw down the flowers and get out the baseball bat. Yogi drops all of that. Empty, empty, empty. Next one. Mana Prakasha Sam Oha Sapna Ja. Janta Vivarjitaha Dasham Kamapi Sam Prapto Bhavet Galita Manasaha An indescribable state is attained by the sage whose mind has melted away, whose functions having ceased to operate, and who is free from delusion, dreaming, and dullness. So it is an indescribable state. One cannot love with the attachment of the ordinary person, nor can you grieve with the sorrow of the ordinary person. Hate with the vengeance of the ordinary person. It's all gone. All gone. Even disease and death ever touch me. All ambition in the ordinary sense of the word is gone. What's it like, Jim? Go there and find out. It is accessible. How many more verses in this chapter, Aditi? That's the end of the chapter. All right. With your permission, folks, I want to end a little early. My voice is beginning to give out. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent yet. But we can spend a little time in questions and answers if someone uh, has anything they'd like to share or ask. All right, thank you for your patience. 
and we'll be back to hybrid classes next week. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Om Pur Namada Pur Namam Pur Na Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namada Ya Pur Nameva Vishishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pranamaha Hari Om Om Thank you all. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you all.